everybody. Welcome back to Recordology. Welcome, 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 welcome. We're glad to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, welcome in you guys on this beautiful Colorado Labor Day. It is absolutely beautiful outside today. In fact, took a nice drive up in the mountains. That was awesome. Just absolutely beautiful. Down here in the city, we got blue skies. The haze is pretty much dissipated. For those of you here in the Mile High City with me, you know we've been fighting those that smoke haze. And no, it's not smoke from questionable substances that may be consumed in said state. At least we believe it's from wildfires. Perhaps folks over in California? I don't know. I can't say, I can't say that with certainty. I can't say that with certainty. For those of you that are watching the replay, welcome in as well. Give it a few minutes for folks to join here. And we've got some cool stuff. We are going to do a little unboxing of some mail that we received recently, as well as a teardown of this tape deck right here. Why am I doing it? I'll explain all of that here in a little bit. So welcome in, everybody. I hope you're having a good day off. I hope you are having a day off. If you don't have that luxury, thank you for the work that you do. And um, yeah, so it's nice to have a little bit of a breather. Now, if you're anything like me, a day off actually somehow makes the week feel longer, even though it's going to be a four-day work week for many of us. Somehow, some way, by the time Friday night rolls around, it's going to feel like a long week. I don't know why that is, how that is, any of that, but somehow it is. So if you are on, thank you to those of you that are. Stand by. We're going to get started here in a minute. You can, uh, we got the uh, chat going. It is set to members only mode. So if you're a member of the Vinyl Nation, you can add your chat there. You can also super chat in if you would prefer to do that as well. Comments to the replay uh, can be made down below. But mostly I just wanted to share with you some time today as we hang out on our day off. Hopefully it's a day off for you guys. Also, you'll notice we are doing it early so that our friends in the uh, uh, European region can join us. I believe it is approximately 8 p.m. for you. It is 1 p.m. here in the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. And so welcome to everybody joining. We'll get started here in just a minute. So yeah, feel free in the comments to let me know what you're up to, any questions you have. Be happy to answer those as we go along. I don't know how long we're going to stay on. It'll depend on how many people seem to be enjoying this. And I, I appreciate you making time to be here. So that is always a huge, huge thing. Thank you as people join. It's got more and more joining. Thank you so much. Tell your friends if you wouldn't mind. Tweet this out. Post it. Let everybody know that the, the party's over here at Recordology. Party's at my house. And we're going to have fun. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to save the mail. I'm going to save the mail to later on in the show. So what we're doing here is we're tearing down this uh, Pioneer. Is it Pioneer? <laughs> I think I would know. Okay, focus is fun. Hold on, guys. Focus is going to be coming back here in a minute, I hope. There we go. Okay. So we're tearing down this deck, searching for parts, scavenging for parts, and the reason being is that I'm pretty happy with my Yamaha deck that we reviewed recently. It's I've been testing it throughout the week, and it seems to be doing a good job. So I'm going to make that my main deck. Why did I feel the need to upgrade from this? Because I'd had this Pioneer. I bought it at a garage sale about, gosh, we had this early days in the channel. If you watch some of our early videos, you'll see this guy sitting in the back. It was really before I even was sure if I wanted to get back into tapes, but I uh, bought this for $10 at a, uh, it was funny because it, it was a garage sale, but mostly of cool stuff. There was no clothes or boring stuff. There wasn't a, a blanket with a bunch of, you know, baby clothes laying out. It was all electronics, things like that. Kind of a guy's garage sale. So anyway, we, uh, I picked this up. <laughs> of course, you know how it goes. The wife and I are driving around, see the signs for this, and I'm like, oh, let me just go look. I won't buy anything. I just want to go look. Sure enough, I come back with this. And in fact, I didn't realize that the 10 bucks I spent on this actually belonged to a relative. We were, <laughs> we were going to pick up, we were going to on an errand to pick something up, and I, I spent our money on this tape deck. 
but it's been a good tape deck. There are a couple of issues if you've been around for a while. If you haven't, by the way, welcome. Thank you for being here. But if you've been around for a while, you've had this deck on many, many times. It's worked pretty dang good. I made a lot of good tapes with it. I've listened to a lot of tapes with it. But we had an issue where I got an RCA cable jammed in the back here. And for the life of me, it could not extract it without completely mangling the jack. So it shorts out and you kind of have to have the cable in the right position. And what's really frustrating is even if you do have it in the right position, sometimes the recording will start fine. You'll leave the room and come back. By the way, there's the reveal. You'll leave the room and come back and the darn thing is shorted out somewhere along the way. So it's just not reliable. And I feel like I've gotten my uh, $10 worth out of it. So here it is. This is the, what model is this? The Pioneer CTW504R. I think we dated this to 94. I can look on the motor and find a date code. Oh, there, there, look at this. This cracks me up. You probably can't see it from there, but the motors are the same brand of motors that were in the Pioneer CD player we just reviewed. That was a dud. Boy, was that a dud. Same motors that were in the Yamaha tape deck. It's an off-the-shelf component. It's an off-the-shelf component. So why am I tearing this down if I'm just going to throw it away? And I thought about, should I donate it? But honestly, somebody would think they're getting a good tape deck. And then what would end up happening is they would have those problems and take it back. So it's not consistent. It's just reached the end of its life. Now, for my friends in the UK... Many of you have let me know that these things are hard to come by in what they call charity shops or what we call thrift stores. So from that perspective, you may be like, it works. Why would you throw it away? Why would you do anything to it? If it works, even to a certain extent, why would you, you know, not just cherish it? Here in the States, they're not as rare. I mean, if you go to a thrift store, it's most weekends you will find a tape deck of some sort. So it's not so rare that you can't find it. So what I've decided to do is pilfer parts off of this uh, from my other tape deck. You may be saying, what parts? What are you going to, what could you possibly save? I'll tell you a minute. This is the back panel. Look at that. Look at that RCA jack. Okay. There's the camera. There's the camera. You can see that it's mangled. And it does function. It does function. It does the remote control in and out. CD deck synchro. I never used any of those features. But what I really am interested in are these belts. I am hoping and thinking that they are probably somewhat standard belt sizes, I hope. You can see a flat belt and then a square belt. Pretty typical for a tape deck. While we're down here, let's take a look over. Some of the parts here, we've got a Pioneer IC right there, a massive one. You know, I was like looking for logos on chips. That's just it's as exciting as my life is. What do we got there? There's a Sony IC. There's another one. I'm surprised there's not a Toshiba one. It seems to be always a Toshiba chip in any deck. But anyhow, that's my plan. I'm going to steal the belts off these decks and keep them for my Pioneer in the hopes that it will fit if I need to do a replacement. Um, thanks for the thumbs up, you guys. we got three thumbs up. If you're watching, give me a thumbs up. That's free and easy to do, and that would really help us. I would let, let YouTube know that we actually have people out there that you know, enjoy the content that we do, and I very much appreciate it. So please give me a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate that. And share it out. Tell your friends all that good stuff. If you're If you're a member of any groups that you could share this feed out to real quick. You won't miss anything if you drop out to do that for a second and come back. So interesting deck here. You know, the, the dual, the dual well tape machines are actually the lower end units. You may be saying, well, why it's better to have more, right? Kind of. Yeah. But these were marketed towards consumers that wanted to dub tapes, which was a huge thing back in the day. People of my generation or close to it will know about, you know, the fact that most of their music, if they're anything like me, were on dubbed tapes. So uh, to be able to dub a tape 
was was a was an asset. So higher end decks like my Yamaha, it's not high end, but it's higher end, have only a single tape deck. So kind of makes me a little nervous because I'm like, well, what if that one deck fails? You know what I mean? It's you're down to one, you don't have the redundancy here. So anyhow, I'm going to steal the belts off this that we do it in real time. Because power supply and everything. I am keeping this unplugged, obviously. But you know what? Before we start chopping it up, before the chop shop, that's why I should have called this video live chop shop. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and test it out. One final, one final lap around the racetrack. We're going to play a tape on this thing with the cover open. So that's safe. No, it's not. Don't do this. This is stupid. But that's why you watch this channel, right? So let's find the right cord. Okay. We'll be using my uh, favorite Bluetooth speaker. I know. Small pleasures in life. Putting that somewhere near the mic so you can hear that. And connecting the RCA jacks. Be careful not to touch anything because now these caps and everything are charging up. Especially get your fingers away from there. That's dangerous. You could hurt yourself. So what we're going to do is plug into the speaker and set that right there. I've got a nice copyright friendly cassette tape that we'll be using. Nostalgic Radio Jack Benny Volume 2. I'm going to power up the deck one last time. One last time. It's going to go out in a blaze of glory. We'll try this in deck A. Hey, you can see how it works. Maybe you've never seen a tape deck. Okay, what's going on? It's off. Now it's on. Okay. Let's see if we get any sound through here. Give it a minute. Also, it would do that. See how it just like played for a little bit and then stopped? It's just glitchy. It's got some glitchiness to it. Let's try playing in the opposite direction. See this big flywheel there in the back? That's a plastic flywheel, I believe. I know I'm touching it, but that's a safe part. Yeah, see, now I can't get it to play in either direction. See, it's not so sad. It's not so sad. Isn't this interesting? Love this stuff. Obviously, this isn't the most high fidelity, you know, thing to test this with, but. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the last Jack Benny show. Of the but this is a good invalidating test to do. I'm also realizing this is really bizarre. The image that I'm seeing on my screen is is reversed from reality. So, this is actually the right deck. Does that does that look reversed to you? Does like the writing on there look backwards, or is that just for my own benefit? But yeah, this is in, in actuality on the right side of this. This should be on the right side, not the left side. So that's weird. But anyway, I think there's probably a mirroring setting that you can you can do with this. All right, let's play it on that deck. Also, the last program of the current series. And as a matter of fact, it's the last show of the season. So now I bring you a man I thought wouldn't play. Jack Benny show is great, by the way. If you haven't jumped into the world of old-time radio, it's a lot of fun. You may be saying to yourself that it's too archaic to enjoy, but there's some really good stuff out there. And a lot of the recordings have survived intact. Let's try fast-forwarding or rewinding it. Um, it's interesting, you know, before the advent of the internet, old time radio was, you know, what's the word shared among enthusiasts via tape duplicate, do tape duplicates, copies of copies of copies. So a lot of what's out there nowadays is very muffled sounding and old because it's a copy of a copy of a copy. And, you know, in some cases, a source materials is acetate discs and whatnot don't exist. So, anyhow. okay. So we've established it. It works to a degree, but it is it is glitchy. And I don't know why there's no sound at this point. So, okay, there you go. For those of you that feel that I'm committing a crime by what I'm about to do, um, don't. So we're going to unplug it now. 
Now, simply by unplugging it does not mean that it's no longer dangerous to be mucking around under the hood because those caps can hold a charge for a long time. And yes, I know you can discharge them, but we're gonna steer clear of that stuff. Luckily, this is fairly modular, so we can, uh, we can access the various components. Welcome in, everybody. If you're just joining us, we're tearing stuff apart. We're going to do some mail here in a little bit. Just want to hang out a little bit today. Appreciate it. If you guys are not yet a member of the Vinyl Nation, would encourage you to do so. It's like $3.99 a month. It's like a cup. It's a, it's a Starbucks. It's a tall caramel macchiato at Starbucks. And I get it. Sometimes 99 cents is too much money, so I totally get it. But if you're able to, that will help support the channel. Not only do you get to do live chats on these types of shows, but we do an extra Friday show. We had our first one this last Friday, and you have access to all that content, exclusive posts in the community tab for members only. I want to welcome you to be a part of that. Okay, let's go ahead and start ripping stuff apart. Um, so we do have it unplugged. I'm going to start by just freeing up some space here. I just ripped off that. That's never coming back on again. Obviously, I don't have to be too careful considering the fact that I'm not intending on using this again. It feels so wrong. <laughs> it feels wrong. Okay. I'm not sure how. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to remove this belt or the belt, this ribbon as well. I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take the face plate off. That might make it easier for us. Okay. Definitely got my ten bucks worth out of it, and the person that was selling it in the garage sale got their money out of it. Okay. okay I got a couple of screws over here. What are you guys doing today? Let me know, know. Let me know in the chat what you're up to. Any questions you have? Anything you think I should salvage out of this deck besides belts? Anything you'd like to see on the show? Just say hi. Love to hear from you guys. Always do. And like I've told people before too, you know, I read all the comments as though they're whether it's an old show or a new show. I read them all. All right. Okay. All right, so we got this pretty well. I believe it plugs in, yeah. I'm much better at tearing stuff apart when I don't have to put it back together again than I am when I actually am trying to fix something. So I don't have to be skilled in any way to do what I'm doing. Okay. One more. We have loosed ourselves from the chassis and we can focus on that. So say goodbye to the main board. One final look at the hulking carcass of this tape deck. It's been a good run. It's been a good run indeed. Speak now or forever hold your peace. If anything is worth salvaging out of here. And no, I'm not going to be needing to save specific electric components for any further work. Bando. Save time and money today with Bando, the power supply of champions. All right, let me get this out of the way. So over here. My wife is fully supportive of this show because it means that something is leaving the house instead of coming into them. Except for the mail. That is something coming in. Okay, let's take a closer look at what we got here. You guys said it before, but this is the same brand of motor. Right 
using a webcam today, so it's not the same resolution that we normally get. Macron, I think it's a Macron motor. But there is the back. Flywheels are indeed plastic. They are not metal. But they do the job. Marucci motor, I think it says on the back there. I just want to steal the belts. That's my goal. So let me see. Let's pop. I've had these decks out before, so somewhere within my limited brain has the ability to do this. Okay. And we may have to actually remove some screws. I know you can buy a pack of belts pretty cheap, but I got to thinking to myself. I wasn't sure. I felt conflicted about what to do with this deck. Do I toss it? Do I donate it? Then I thought, well, I could salvage the belts. And there, it's not 100% that it'll fit the Yamaha deck. And the belts on the Yamaha seem to be fine. I don't feel like they're slipping. They're not sticky or tacky at all. I mean, they have the normal amount of tack. But they... Um, they seem a little dried out, maybe a little more firm and brittle than I would like them to be. So at some point, it's only natural that those belts would need to be replaced. All right, there's one deck. Let's take out the other. I mean, it's a consumable part. It is a consumable part. Look at that. Apparently, I never put that screw back last time. My mom told me a story. One of those stories always sticks with you about my grandpa who had a Volkswagen Beetle, which they would take on trips up in the mountains here in Colorado and do things with it that Volkswagens were never intended to do. Four-wheeling and stuff, off-roading. But he loved to work on that thing. In fact, I inherited some of his tools, which I still have and cherish. But he would always have leftover parts when he would put things back together. That's I've inherited that. I've inherited that. And, you know, it's a mark of pride when you could have leftover parts and the thing still works because then the way I look at it is you're smarter than the people that design this stuff to begin with. Okay, that might be a stretch, but I'm going to go with it. Okay, both decks have been freed from their housing. Goodbye, housing. There's the PCB for the uh, front panel display. Look at this, a couple unused knockouts here that were never used at least on this model this was one in a series as you can imagine there were um others that were very similar this model had the dolby b and c the one that came out after this i think 1995's model had the dolby s as well we had a deck with dolby s a sony deck actually ended up selling that i wasn't as impressed with it as i thought i would be plus unless you have metal tape and you're making a lot of your own homemade tapes that doesn't do a whole lot for you. That being said, the Yamaha metal tape at Dolby C is absolutely phenomenal. All right. Michael is in the chat. Late to the party, but seeing the guts of yet another fantastic device. First of all, Michael, welcome in. Thank you for being a member of the nation. And yes, we are deconstructing my old Pioneer dual well tape deck, salvaging it for, remote, for uh, belts. And anything else anybody tells me I should say so we're going to take this down. We're almost there. We got the decks out of the chassis. It was just, if you're freaking out, like, oh, my gosh, why would you do that? Um, the Pioneer had a shorting line input. And as I demonstrated earlier in the show, it had some issues with inconsistency. It just wouldn't play sometimes. Or it would just stop. Or You know what I mean? Like, there were just there were issues. So I decided to part it out, as it were. Okay, so we're down now to where I can pretty much take the uh, belts off, except for the fact that the posts of the motor. So I, oh, they always do this kind of stuff. Like, could you put a, they should have put posts on the sides that wouldn't make you have to do this. But basically, we're going to have to get that motor off. How are you going to do this? I know I could snap it off. Okay, oh, okay, I got you. So I need something. 
like this. Oops, I need to throw my screwdriver on the floor. Picked up the screwdriver from the floor. So there are, I'm glad I brought a few different sizes of screwdrivers. Inevitably, when I start filming, I never have the right thing. And this won't be so hard after all. Now the question is, once I get these belts off, A, will they be the right size for the Yamaha if and when I ever need to replace them? And B, will I be able to find them? All right, the motor came off. That was actually easier than I thought. And there's our first belt. There's the motor. Be a Westlife is so good at reading date codes on serial numbers and stuff, and I am blind as a bat when it comes to this stuff. This is the EG 530KD2B motor by, is it Macron? Mabuchi. I don't know why I keep saying Macron. Mabuchi. Yeah, it says Mabuchi. Sorry, it's hard to see what I'm doing. Anyway, this motor is very prolific. You can see this in a lot of stuff. Industry standard. So the belt, how to judge a good belt. First of all, it should be having its own form. There shouldn't be any kinks or any... You know, it shouldn't be shaped in a weird tape path or belt path sort of way that it was positioned in the deck. In this case, it's pretty good. It's got a kink up here. Probably from being in a position where, you know, it was like this or something for a long period of time. And then it took that on. This belt also feels a little bit stale, a little bit brittle. I feel like it would snap with a little bit of force if I were to yank it. And that's kind of what the one in my Yamaha felt, with, felt like, too. And we've got another belt. This is a square belt. This simply will pull off there. I think that's the only belt on this unit. Again, pretty, pretty stale, but not totally dried out. And also not, you know, goo. As you know, they can turn to goo a lot. And um, it seems like everything Techmon gets turns to goo. Have you noticed that? It has happened to us as well, but it doesn't seem like it happens as much. Michael says, ooh, the Pioneer, always good to recover some useful parts. What brand of motor is it? Mabuchi. Yep, Mabuchi. It is indeed. I don't know why I see that as Macron from a distance, but then when I put my blind as a bad eyes closer, I can see that it is, in fact, Mabuchi. But I've saved a couple of these. Um, JYK motors are used in turntables a lot. I don't know if I've seen a Mabuchi motor. But my dad and I used to play this. This is good times. Me and my dad... He would love this stuff. He would he would absolutely love just, you know, sitting here and, you know, those priceless premium memories. Uh, but we would have, I don't know why, but we'd have, he'd bring me home stuff like this, like electric motors, and he'd show me how to connect it to the terminals of a battery and make it spin in the basics of that. He's a expert in so many things, and uh, least, of, least, least of which... Um, is definitely electrical components and engineering. He knows, let's just say he knows his way around a soldering iron and a circuit board, much more so than I do. Okay, so I think we've pilfered everything out of here. This head, take a look at this head, you guys. It's a, I don't see any branding on this. It is a stereo head, and there is an interesting, okay, first of all, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's do a couple of things here. Let's do the fingernail tape head test. And what that is, is if you take your fingernail and gently roll, run it back and forth along the surface of that head, if you feel ridges or little edges, then you know the tape head is wearing out because the tape, after rubbing on that head can, for so long, will eventually cut grooves into it. This one feels smooth still. And I can tell, I, this camera isn't capable of doing good close-ups, but I can tell you by looking at it, obviously it is a stereo head. Oh, gee, I hope it's a stereo head. Um, but it's a two-track head, meaning there's only heads, there's only active uh, gaps and heads on one side of this unit. So this, right down here, this design with this light-colored metal piece inside this bracket indicates that it is an um, auto-reverse deck. So the entire head will flip to the other side. I much prefer a system that has a four four track head that will literally keep a stationary head and the tape just moves back and forth and activates whatever tracks are needed. Um, because if you have a tape deck with a head that rotates like this one does, 
you are never sure if it's going to be in perfect alignment. And um, so when it rotates back around, it could be, you know, microns off, but enough to impact things. So that's an important thing about it. Obviously, the fact we got two pinch rollers here, two cap stands, as we said before, two flywheels, which are both plastic. Interesting one's bigger than the other. I wonder if it's got better tape stability going in one direction versus the other. Let me make sure I'm not missing any comments there. And let's do the same thing with this. And then we'll go on to our viewer mail, which I'm excited about. Interesting story about that, too, because I think this box had an interesting trip, judging by the looks of it. I have not opened it. I resist the temptation to open my mail before we're doing it together. I want us all to have the fun. In my family, on Christmas morning, we all sat and stared at the person opening their present, which is just the way it was with us and completely normal. My wife's family was different. They distributed the packages, and then they all sort of tear into it, and it's just like eight minutes of pandemonium. Very exciting, very exciting pandemonium. That belt fell off. Same thing, same condition, but just a different mentality. So... I'm going with the mindset of let's all watch Timmy open up his present and make sure Timmy is appreciative. Okay. All right. Obviously it's off now, so we're good. And we'll remove this belt right there. Yeah. I mean, they're all in decent condition. Worth saving. Plastic flywheel. Oh, you know what? There is another belt in there. It is a tiny belt. Wait, is there? Oh no, I was looking at a I was looking at a washer. It looked like a belt. I've seen so many of these mechanisms now that I can't remember which one I'm looking at. Yeah, you can see solenoid operated motor or a head assembly there. Just rotates around. Very interesting. A combination of belts and gears to operate. As a kid, I never had any idea that a tape deck actually had belts. For some reason in my mind, it was a solid geared device. Okay, saying goodbye. Exit stage right, and actually it's stage left, but for some reason YouTube's flipping this. And I have received the payoff for the work, which is a handful of belts that will hopefully be decent down the road. So let me reconfigure a little bit here, and we'll open some mail. How about that? Sounds like fun. Again, would love to hear what you guys are up to today. Any questions you may have, things you would like to see, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I don't have to worry about losing the screws because I'm just going to throw them away until I'm in here trying to get a glass of milk or something at 1 a.m. and step on one of those screws. And then expletives will be emitted. Okay, so this box, and I, I got it flipped over this way because it has some personal information on the other side from the sender, so I don't, want, I don't ever want to compromise privacy of our viewers, so I'm going to keep it like this, but I want to tilt it up a little bit. This box almost looks like it got ran over, <laughs> so hopefully... There isn't a bunch of pieces of things in here. Hopefully we have some actual, you know, salvageable stuff. But to the individual who sent this, I know who you are and I appreciate you so very much. I don't know if you want me to say your name, so I'm assuming not. And I'm just going to say thank you. This was a significant cost for you to not only find, but to mail to me. So I appreciate it. Anytime a viewer sends his mail is, is extremely just it's humbling and I am very thankful. So thank you for that. Michael says, what amazing turntables can we expect coming reviews? Oh, that's a good question. That's a great question, Michael. What turntables do we have coming up? Um, so a little inside baseball for you guys. There has been a major part, part shortage that has impacted a number of industries. For instance, it's hard to get a washing machine right now because the parts for a washing machine are on backlog and therefore it's driving the market and prices up on a lot of appliances. The automotive market is suffering from a lack of uh, chips that power the computers in those cars. 
In fact, certain companies have hundreds of thousands of stock sitting there, model 2021s, 2022s, waiting for that part in order to be sold, but they can't because there's a major backlog, which I heard, I think last night or this morning on the news, is going to extend into next year, which is a bummer. The good news is it made an amazing, like kind of a cottage industry for used cars and used vehicles valuation was at about 130% this summer. So it was a great time to sell your used car. <laughs> it really, really was. Took advantage of that. So, um, but that's also all this, is, all that to say this, it's also impacting the uh, turntable business. So we, uh, a lot of companies like Audio Technica is out of stock. A lot of times people come to me and say, the LP3s discontinued. At, there's, there's none on Amazon. Or there's no LP60s. There's no LP120s. And it's not that. It's not that there's none. It's that there is none in stock. Because the way companies work, uh, Amazon is a distribution channel, for example, is they ship product usually from China to warehouses of Amazon in the United States. And then they maintain a certain level of stock at those warehouses. And from there, they do their order fulfillment. So when you buy a product, it doesn't have to come all the way to China. And that's how come you can get something that's Chinese made and face it. Most of our products are, and don't say they're all crap because you know the device that you're watching on this was probably made in either Malaysia or China, iPhones included. You know They are able to be shipped and those orders are able to be fulfilled a lot quicker thanks to that type of a distribution model. The downside is when there's a backlog, it can catch up. So with the situation that we found ourselves in over the last year and a half, it didn't hit right away because there was a certain amount of back stock. Once those items sold out, they couldn't be the the warehouses couldn't be restocked because then the part shortages, the labor shortages, you know, the overall issues that we faced hit full force. So now we're really paying the penalty for the pipeline issues that we uh, incurred due to you know everything shutting down last year and this year too. So. Um, all that to say that Amazon has is slowly getting stock back. Hopefully, Audio Technica. We've got um, some things planned with them to review over the last over the it's supposed to be throughout this year, but you know we've been delayed. So I've got a number of things that we're going to be reviewing. Audio Technica, um, Victrola had some long term you know plans that we were planning on, although they have a tendency to go dormant on us for from time to time and. Then they'll pop up out of the blue. So we call it as we see it, good, bad, or otherwise. I don't care, you know, if you've been working with us before. If you send us a piece of crap, we'll call it as such. So, all right. All that's I don't know. I have no idea. I don't think I have any imminent. No, that's not true. That's not true. I do have a company that is a, how do I describe this? It's not one of the big name turntables, but it's a brand you've heard of on this channel before. That's, that's a good way to do it. They um, are sending us a turntable, hopefully soon to review. And we'll see if it's any good. If it's good, we'll state it. If it's not, we'll state that too. All right, guys. So here is our unboxing. Again, I'm trying to be careful that I'm not showing anything personal. I don't think I am. Stack of LPs, actually pretty durable. So if a box crushing had to occur, and again, here's another angle on that. I want to be careful not to. See, it got smashed. Almost like it got ran over. I've seen I've seen these things with tire marks <laughs> across them before. Thankfully, this one doesn't have that. But I have seen that before. Uh, but LPs are pretty durable. I mean, you know, sometimes marketed as unbreakable, although I think that's a not necessarily the case. All right, guys, grand finale. Thank you for joining us today. Well, let's see what we got. Some records here. First one. Awesome. Aretha Franklin. Once in a lifetime. I love Aretha Franklin. That is so cool. Again, a memory back to my dad. We used to, there's a certain movies that we used to watch all the time. And that's why I've kind of developed this habit of watching movies over and over. If I have a movie I love, it's not a one-time experience. It's like a, it's a friend. It's like a friend that I keep visiting over and over and over again. Anyway, so I was introduced to Aretha Franklin uh, by the Blues Brothers. And my dad and I always watched that movie. It's great. The Nun That Slides Back at the Top of the Stairs. Eminently quotable movie, but it has Aretha Franklin in it, which is really, really cool. 
And uh, I love this stuff. So she passed away a couple of years ago. And this record is one that I don't have. I don't have any of her stuff, but I love her music. So let's see what we got here. Moon River, If I Had a Hammer. These are great songs of this era. Awesome, you guys. Awesome. That is great. Thank you so very, very much. I cannot wait. Oh, it's got a nice new sleeve, too. This is so cool. We'll try to feature as much of this as possible on upcoming shows. Next, we have The Platters. Cool. This is great. Look at this. Stereo Hi-Fi. Mercury. The Platters. Remember when. This is great. I love this kind of music as well. A Tisket, A Tasket. Interesting story there. Um, Ella Fitzgerald was actually a member of an orchestra. What the heck is the orchestra? Dang it. Chick Webb. I want to say Chick Webb. I think, I think she was a singer in the Chick Webb Orchestra. And he had passed away. I think it's Chick. Is it Chick Webb? I think it's Chick Webb. He passed away. She actually took over leading that band. She was only like 19 years old. But she was also the lead singer. And uh, this was her song, A Tisket, A Tasket. So this is cool. So this is this will be some really cool music. I love this stuff. I cannot wait to give it a listen. Cool. Look at this. Behind the scenes pictures and stuff. I love all of that. Oh, cool. I see Baloo. This is good. You guys know me so well. Walt Disney presents Songs from the Jungle Book. Look for the bare necessity. Stereophonic. A Disneyland record. Yes. I love this stuff. Shere Khan. Amazing. Mowgli. Oh, this is so, so cool. And the voice talent in this stuff is just, I mean, absolutely amazing. I Was this Paul Fries or not Paul Fries? It was the guy that did Tony the Tiger, about half the Pirates of the Caribbean voices. <sighs> Thurl Ravenscroft. I'm thinking Thurl Ravenscroft. Also was the singing voice in the, um, was also the singing voice in um, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And you've got Baloo, who was voiced by, um, gosh, what is his name? You know, I said terrible when I'm on the spot, you know, trying to think on lives or even on video or even period sometimes. But Jack Benny's band leader, Phil Harris. Phil Harris. Yes. Man, that's satisfying to get that. Okay. Let's look at the back. Awesome. I love this stuff. I love this stuff. Can't wait to take a look at that. We got more here. Cool oldies but goodies. Is this cool, like metallic golden cover here. More original recordings, greatest rock and roll hits of all time. I love vintage rock and roll. This is awesome. This is great, you guys. Look at this. So cool. This is one of the reasons why I love records because it's not just about the content on the records, but it's the packaging and it's the artwork and it's all of the stuff that goes along with it. Reading about them on the back, you know, learning more about these artists. That's great. Can't wait to check that out as well. And one more here. We've got a thick one. Cool. American Top 40 with Casey Kasem. Do you remember? I mean, the, his voice instantly comes to mind. Casey Kasem. This is Casey Kasem here. Ben Stan, American Ben. Was that Dick Clark? That was Dick Clark. Sorry, but Casey Kasem with the top 40. That was radio. Okay, got it. Sorry. Got my Casey Kasem on my Dick Clark a little bit mixed up. But I got the voice right. Casey Kasem. Man, I remember listening to that stuff. Top 40 radio. This is so cool. ABC Watermark. This looks like a non-commercial release. This is cool. Hold on. There's something to read in here. No. Look at this, you guys. I think these are radio transcriptions. American Top 40 with Casey Kasem. To Top 40 subscribers, ABC Watermark, November 5th, 1955. Oh, that's a different thing. November 5th, 1984. Guest host. And this week's American Top 40 program, 844-6, for air, 10-11-84. Charlie Van Dyke will be sitting in for Casey Kasem. Casey will return next week for show number blah, 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 blah. Look at this. This is cool. It's got scripts and stuff. Okay, this may be the coolest. Look at this. It's a run sheet. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Tell me this is not the coolest thing you've ever seen. Look at this. It's a run sheet 
This is absolutely awesome. Can you guys find this stuff and then send it to me. It's such an amazing gift. This is cool. Look at this. Oh, this is cool. All my ears in broadcast. I've never seen it broken down into a pie chart. I like that. That's actually genius. For the first seven and a half minutes, segment number one, followed by a bubble yum ad, local minute 30, segment number two, minutes 28 seconds. When I started working in broadcast, I couldn't stop thinking in terms of 2830 and 5830, which is when we would run our run, run our uh, spots. And I would wake up. I remember when I started in master control, I was like, what if I, how, how do I know when, if I, if, I'm, if I go to the bathroom or if I leave the room, like, you'll know. And I'm like, what? And sure enough, it becomes ingrained in you and you, you, you wish you could stop. It took years before I stopped looking at my watch magically at 2830 and 5830. This is so cool. You guys, this kind of stuff. This is so cool. This is so cool. You can't get this on streaming. You know what I mean? This kind of stuff. Oh, this is too cool. Then Charlie Van Dyke IDs himself. Look at this. And obviously all the songs. Number seven, Better Be Good to Me by Tina Turner. Followed by Out of Touch, Daryl Hall and John Oates. Hall and Oates right here. On top 40, Casey Casey. This is great. So cool. Thank you so much. Let's take a look. I have to, we have to look at the records. We have to look at these discs. Okay, so that is crazy. Absolutely crazy. So now we can see how we were listening to this stuff. And my dad, among every, it seems like he's done everything, but, um, this show is dedicated to dad, I guess, <laughs> because we're talking a lot about him, which is awesome. My hero. Um, he worked in broadcasting and talked about how they would convert the records onto cart systems, kind of like four track carts, kind of a pro version of eight track prede predecessor to the eight track format. And that's cool. That's really, really cool. But a lot of times they would get their content in vinyl form to begin with. So if these were loaded into a cart, eventually they probably were played once. Yeah, these things still have polish on them. This thing is immaculate. It's dirty, but it's the condition is immaculate. That is so cool. You can still see the polish. It's like a brand new record. So they probably loaded it into their cart system and then didn't use the discs. That is so cool. What a grand finale. This was a huge surprise. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for today. I just wanted to hang out 45 minutes or so. And I appreciate you making time for us, uh, not just today, but every day. Again, if you would like to become a member of the Vinyl Nation, would love for you to be able to do so. If not, we'll still be here with two free shows a week and all the content that you have come to expect here on Recordology. Can't believe we've been doing this now for, I think we're going on our fourth year or something. It's spring of 2017. And here we are looking down the barrel of 2021. Can't even believe it. But yeah, $3.99 you can join, and that will give you an extra show Friday. We do an exclusive Friday show. Last week's exclusive Vinyl Nation show was um, we reviewed a product that had been stolen from me, and I found one again. So we reviewed it, and it's some cool side-by-side -side stuff. If you like cameras especially, check that out. We also looked at some records uh, that we didn't have time to on the regular show. So you'll get to see some really cool stuff. And Michael, thank you for joining in the chat. Everybody commenting after the fact in the replay. Thank you as well. And that's going to do it for now, guys. So happy record hunting, and we will see you next time.